We are at the Tampa Convention Center Radio Row for the Republican National Convention, and we are joined right here on Radio Row now by Senator Ron Johnson. Senator, good morning. Hey, Jerry, how are you doing? I love that bumper music. We're both shaking our yeah, heads. We're saying, boom, boom, yeah, boom, boom, boom. And it's getting caught on video, too. How embarrassing. <laughs> Can't still, anyway. I hope that doesn't show up on any website. Uh, your initial, well, first, have you had a chance to chat with the Wisconsin delegation at all? Absolutely. We came down here on yeah. Saturday. We kind of beat. You know, got, got ahead of the storm. storm in here, so we were all there. We had had a great event uh, the first night, uh, uh, you know, celebrating Reince's uh, success, uh, really really reviving the RNC, which has done a phenomenal job. Uh, Governor Walker spoke. Uh, Haley Barber spoke. It was just a great night. So no, we we spent some time with the Wisconsin delegation. We're all excited. Well, several people ask me, you know, this, the, the, as you know, this is the Wisconsin party. You mentioned Reince. You got Scott Walker. You've got Paul Ryan. How fi people ask me, so I'll ask you. You spoke to them. How fired up is the delegation? Oh, they're really fired up. I mean, we have a very strong presence here. I was I was on the floor of the convention. We've got some pretty nice seats there too. We okay. are we are front and center, which is, we're going to have a you know front row seat to the all, all the festivities here. So no, I mean that that's everybody's really jazzed. You know, it's it's interesting. Over the years, these conventions have been deemed as non-news entities. The candidate is already known. It's not as it was one day. Here's what I think is different about this particular convention. I, I think the selection by Mitt Romney of Paul Ryan completely reset this race in terms of, okay, now we know what this is going to be about. This is going to be a big election. The Democrats keep trying to make it about small things, mm -hmm. bank capital, uh, yeah, taxes, and not that abortion's a small issue, but an irrelevant issue right. to, to this campaign. And the media plays along. Oh, boy, they, they are aiding and abetting to the best of their abilities. No, no question about that. So I, that's where I think this convention is important. It resets. Look, you can try that. You can try those distractions. We're not buying it. Now, this is the opportunity for Governor Romney and Paul Ryan to speak to the American public without the filter of the media. And that's just true. You know, people all the time say, you know, why don't you guys say this? Or, you know, why doesn't Governor Romney talk about that? The fact is, we do and he does. But the, the, the bias in the media is revealed not only in what they say, which is pretty biased, but what they, what they don't report on, and that's just true. So this is the opportunity convention where you've got Governor Romney, the American people, tens of millions will be viewing this, and they will see what a fine man he is. They'll see what a fine person Ann Romney is, Paul Ryan, his wife Jana. They are going to, as, as really great individuals who are dedicated to solving the problem. See, and that's where I think, that's where I was going with this, where I think this convention actually from that aspect is important because you're right. There are caricatures of all of the people you just mentioned that have been created in the media. And, and where I think the benefit here is, and I think this happened with the Ronald Reagan. He was painted by the media as this kooky guy. Yeah. And, and when the country got, well, where's the kook you warned us about? I'm not seeing him. I, I see the same thing happening here. No, again, I've, I've, I've had the advantage of, of spending time, a lot of time with Paul Ryan, uh, personal time with, with uh, Governor Romney. These are some fine individuals that have a great deal of knowledge about the problem. It's, you know, it's plus, it's a perfect, you know, complementary skill set between Governor Romney's experience in the private sector, Paul Ryan's extensive knowledge of, of the budget and the fiscal situation of this, this uh, nation, his relationships on both sides of the aisle in Congress to not only be able to, to uh, help craft legislation, but help get it enacted. So the American people will see that. And again, without that media filter, it'll be powerful. Talking with Senator Ron Johnson, do you think, though, my only concern is there, there is so much buildup. Well, this is important. This is their opportunity. You, you, you don't think the, you're, you're scoffing at me. You don't think the pressure no, will get to him? No, because, you know, I, I've seen Governor Romney make speeches. You know, in Wisconsin, we saw him give a great speech when he run the, when, ran, or won the primary. You know, that's the way he, that is who he is. He does give phenomenal speeches. He'll give a great one here. So I don't, I don't think he's there's. Sure, there's a little bit of pressure. I don't think he's going to feel it. He's very capable of it. As you look for, as you mentioned, the, the media really does aid and abet in this. As, as they move on from the convention, I, I just think it's critical to stay to stay on what this race is really about and the two diametrically opposed yeah. directions that each side wants to take the country. But here's here's where I think the Democrats were caught up, were just knocked off their heels. They they and you and I talked about this uh, on the show when both, we were both in Green Bay is they thought they wanted that Medicare debate. They thought they wanted that. And the next thing, who would have thought, who would have thought, Ron, they would have wanted to change the subject from Medicare yeah. because Ryan, Paul Ryan has been that dominating. Well, Jerry, I've always thought you're far better off when you're on offense than yes. when you're on defense. Yep. And let's face it, there's, there was no way that the Democrats weren't, weren't going to play the Medicare card. 
that was going to happen. So let's acknowledge that. And Governor Romney's uh, campaign recognized that. And then as did Governor Romney. And so he picked Paul Ryan and said, let's go on offense. Let's talk about the truth. That's, you know, we have the truth. We have the facts and figures on our side. And it is just true that the, the Ryan Wyden, Ron Wyden, liberal Democrat from Oregon, that is Paul Ryan's bipartisan Medicare plan, has no effect whatsoever on current retirees or people 55 or older. It's addressing the fact that Medicare, if we do nothing, won't be around for the younger generation. So it's addressing and it, trying to preserve and save Medicare for future generations. And that's just a fact. And the only person that has actually passed a law that loots Medicare to pay for a very unpopular health care law, well, that would be President Obama. And that is what Governor Romney, I think, very effectively has been pointing out to the American public. And, and interesting, uh, Gannett Newspapers, Wisconsin, had this whole big thing sorting out the Medicare issue and said that... Uh, the, the Romney notion that that, seven, that that $700 billion cut, yeah, but it doesn't really affect Medicare. So only magically Democrats can cut $700 billion and it has no impact. Right. Well, Jerry, <laughs> you know that, that $716 billion, yeah. by the way, continues to grow. Yes. I mean, as the budget window keeps moving forward where the true cost of Obamacare kicks in, you know, they passed the law, you know, supposedly Obamacare in the first 10 year window was going to cost under a trillion. Well, now we're up to 2013 to 2022, it's going to cost $1.7 trillion. In the real budget window, when it really kicks in 2016 to 2025, it'll cost a minimum of $2.5 trillion. We've got some taxes, fees, and penalties that make up some of that cost. The rest really comes out of what? Medicare. Yeah. And that, that amount that will be looted from Medicare will just continue to expand over the years if we don't repeal the health care law. Talking with Senator Ron Johnson live from the Republican National Convention in Tampa. You and I are both here on Radio Row. Let's talk about Wisconsin a little bit. First couple of polls came out. Uh, in the U.S. Senate race where Tommy Thompson hopes to join you in the Senate. Nine and 11 point, nine and 11 point leads. A lot of people were surprised. I, I, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't. I'm not, I'm not surprised at all that Governor Thompson has opened up that kind of lead. Right. Let's face it, Tommy's a larger-than-life figure in Wisconsin, great name ID, you know, was the leader in welfare reform, which this president has now rolled back, you know, the work requirement right. on welfare, which is a real shame. Um, and let's face it, I, I do believe Tammy Baldwin just might be a little too liberal for Wisconsin. I, I had you know, It's funny you mention that because I had someone say, well, but you know, she hasn't had a, lot, a chance to spend a lot of money and a lot of people don't know her. That's the only thing saving her right now. <laughs> once, <laughs> once they get to find out who she really is. Yikes. And I mean, re yeah, really. Not, not the fictional character that she's going to try to paint out there, but the real Tammy Baldwin and one of the most radically liberal members of the House of Representatives. Right. No, she's going to have a tough time, and I think those polls are, are showing that. You know, and, and it's hard not to get excited. You, know, you talked about how excited the delegation was. I, I if things fall the way that I really think they might, it could be, I know nationally, but in Wisconsin, one of the most remarkable years, if if Governor Romney carries the state, if Governor Thompson gets the Senate seat, if Duffy and Ribble are reelected and they take the state Senate back, I mean, it's just, it could be a remarkable night. You know, I'm asked all the time, well, what's happening in Wisconsin? <laughs> yeah, are you surprised? I'm not at all. You know, you, you know, you talk to listeners all the time. I travel all around right. the Wisconsin. I'm talking to people. in Throughout the upper Midwest, plus Wisconsin, the folks of Wisconsin are fiscally conservative. We, you know, we've talked about this. We have, they have the funny mo notion that, you know what, government ought to live within its means. That's, you know, so that, that plays in. When they see this, mount, you know, this mounting debt, they're appalled by it. They're going to be voting for real leadership. Final question. Uh, doing show prep in the last 24 hours while I was down here, you're seeing a lot of stories. Uh, either to a lot of people outside Wisconsin, it is seen as certainly more blue than red. That's the perception they have. And yet, then yet here we are, Reince Priebus, mm -hmm. Scott Walker, you know, and you, quite frankly, sir, you know, all, all part of that. What do you tell people when they say, what's, what's up with Wisconsin? How do you explain that it's suddenly the center of the conservative universe? Well, as I say, we're fisc we are fiscally conservative. Right. And, you know, we just have basic common sense values. Those you know, people that have common sense values are going to tend to be more conservative, more Republican. Yeah, and you know, that, and it's not just a fluke. You know that that there there is a it's if you get into Wisconsin, you understand why Wisconsin are, is producing those kind of names. And now we have leaders that have actually acknowledged the problem, taken tough votes, hard decisions, and they fixed the problem. And the voters are going to continue to reward those types of leaders. Senator Ron Johnson, thanks for joining us. Enjoy the convention. You too, Jerry. Always good to see you, especially here in person. Again, that is uh, Senator Ron Johnson. And 
We will have more straight ahead from the Republican National Convention in Tampa here on Radio Row. Uh, we did an interview with Scott Walker, not a lot of voice, but we're going to replay it for those of you in Wausau and Sheboygan who didn't catch it and maybe even get to Ryan's previous as well. It's 9-16. Jerry Bader Show.